Hello, my name is Jurjan and welcome back to World of Tanks. Today we're going to be doing a proper tank review of the first reward tank, which is the Stug 4, a tier 5 German tank destroyer. Now, the Stug 4 is much like the normal tier 5 German tank destroyer, the Stug 3. And when I say normal, I mean the older tier 5, because there's also the... Um, it's called Panzer IV SFL, the one with the 88mm, the open top, lightly armoured, powerful gun, um, a lot of people call it a box because it looks like a box. Um, anyway, let's go back to the Stug 4. Now the Stug 4 you can only acquire by completing missions. If we look in the missions tab, you have to complete at least four of the 15 sets. Sorry, you have to complete four sets of 15 missions. So you can complete everything other than artillery, which I have done, or everything other than light tanks, everything other than mediums, everything other than heavies. It would be foolish if you didn't do heavy or light, heavy or medium missions, but light or artillery is up to you in my opinion. I don't really like playing artillery, some people do, but that isn't the point of today's video. Point is the Stug 4. <laughs> Let's go back before I go off topic once again. So the Stug 4 shares the 80mm of frontal hull armor that the Stug 3 gets, which can be quite effective against tier 3s and 4s from a long range. You also get protection from HE shells from the front quite effectively. Quite effective protection from HE shells. HE shells. The sides, however, are only 30 millimeters plus whatever these are. I believe they're either five or ten uh, side skirt plating. Again, only designed to stop high explosives or or mitigate some high explosive damage. In real life, they're probably used to shop stop shaped explosives such as handheld rocket launchers. Uh, and bazookas. Anyway, the rear armor is only 20 millimeters, so basically the sides and rear are horrible. You will be penetrated again and again and again by anything you meet in this vehicle, which is up to tier 7, I believe. I don't think this has preferential matchmaking. If it does, then I believe the limit is tier 6, but if it doesn't, it will be up to tier 7. However, if you're fighting tier 3s, your gun is more than effective, and your frontal armour will be able to stop most of their fire. But the sides and rear will not, especially with your peers and higher tiers. Now, that's the armour taken care of, let's look at the gun. Now the gun is a gun that you can get on the Stug 4. Um, Stug 4? Stug 3! <laughs> uh, and it is the ELS 48 75mm. It has a good rate of fire of 16 rounds a minute. Its damage, average damage, is quite low of 110, and its penetration characteristics are also 110, with standard armor piercing rounds. With APCR, you get 158, which is necessary for certain heavy tanks you'll be fighting, as well as some mediums, especially with tier 6 and 7 if this doesn't have preferential matchmaking. I keep saying this because I haven't actually got into a tier 7 game yet, so it might well do. Anyway, 110 penetration is good enough to go through most tier, uh, well, to go through tier 3s, 4s, most tier 5 mediums, and some tier 5 heavies. The KV-1, if it's angled, will give you significant trouble with only 110 penetration from the front. Therefore, you may need to load armor piercing and composite rigid. The other characteristics, it has a 0.35 accuracy at 100 meters, which is okay, it's nothing exceptional, but it's not bad like a howitzer, say, on the KV-2, which has 0.6 accuracy, something like that. <coughs> the aim time of 1.6 seconds is also very good. It's one of the lowest in the game, but considering this is a relatively low caliber round, it's not to be unexpected. So that's quite good, especially when reoccurring targets. The gun traverse, however, is not good at all. 
Um, I believe, I don't know the proper uh, angles that it can fire from, but I believe it's roughly to about here and here, which leaves you with quite a narrow arc, meaning you have to traverse the tank to re-engage targets that appear on your left and right. Of course, as this is a um, non-turreted tank destroyer, you have to rotate the tank if something gets behind or to the side. Looking at the tracks, we can see that you have a 44 degree traverse speed, which is very good. And you can defend yourself against circling medium tanks such as T-34s. Light tanks will give you the um, give you great trouble, however. Uh, especially things like hmm, what can this thing be? A Chaffee? Chaffee would give you quite a lot of trouble. Um, let's see, what else? The speed of the vehicle is 38 km an hour. However, with a 300 horsepower engine, the power to weight ratio, let's see, power to weight ratio is 11.43 horsepower per ton. And that is quite bad, meaning its acceleration um, without turning left and right is quite poor and will take you quite a long time to get up to your top speed. I don't ever recall seeing a top speed of 38 km an hour in this vehicle. Uh, I assume you can achieve it by going down hills, and perhaps if you go in a straight line for long enough on uh, hard terrain such as the roads of Himmelsdorf. On soft and medium terrain though, such as grass and hills, you will not reach the speed limit at all. <clears throat> Other characteristics of the vehicle include its View range, which is only 310, however this is at tier 5, and Wargaming in the past uh, used to be more lenient on the lower tiers with their view range, but now, I don't know which patch it was, patch 9 point something, somebody can tell me, uh, the view range has been decreased of a lot of these vehicles, and 310 is pretty standard for a tier 4, tier 5, and it's quite bad, meaning you have to have other vehicles helping you, such as light tanks, uh, medium, and some uh, fast mediums. I understand the changes because uh, some tank destroyers, and still at higher tiers, this is a very big problem. Um, they were just spotting targets from themselves and remaining stealthed uh, and just killing everything and people start crying, essentially. Uh, so it was a good change. You can mitigate this 310... I, I keep rambling on, don't I? Um, about other things which aren't the Stag 4. The Stag 4, yes. The view range can be increased, of course, with equipment such as binoculars or coated optics. I would recommend binoculars uh, for this because, as you can see, on a 100% crew, buffs up to 387 uh, view range, which is more than enough in tier 5 games. Especially when you're fighting Soviet heavy tanks, which have, well, hardly any view range at all. Um, for the other equipments, equipment slots, I've gone with a gun rammer to get the reload down to 3.19 seconds, which is very good. Um, and it's pretty standard, to be honest, with Tank Destroyer guns of 75mm at this tier. Binoculars, as I've already said, are for the view range, which is necessary for this Tank Destroyer. And lastly, a camera net to improve your camera rating. I've also gone for, uh, as my first skill, this crew is quite new still, uh, camo. Camo, camo, and camo. Camouflage is your biggest strength in one of these types of vehicles. It's a sneaky Tank Destroyer. It likes to go at the back, sniping targets that it um, that they that the targets cannot uh, cannot see you. So if you and this thing is quite good at DPM, so you just keep firing and firing and firing, and eventually they'll die. You do have to be mindful that you're not spotted through bushes, however, because your view, so your hit points. I have not mentioned hit points yet. This is shameful. You only have 360, which, if I compare to the 
Stug 3G is only 10 po hit points more than the Stug 3. Stug 3G. I need. I, I just call it the Stug 3 because in the past it, there was only one Stug, but more recently they've added the Stug 3B and then the Stug 3G. And the Stug 3G is the original Stug 3. Anyway, that's enough talk about the tank. Um, let us have a look at a replay to see how I would use it in the battle. Welcome to Redshire in the Stug 4. Uh, we've spawned from the northeast, therefore, I'm going to head up onto that hill. It's an encounter game, and you can see the speed is. Actually, I uh, am completely mistaken from the. Um, from the garage, this thing does reach its speed limit very quickly, but normally it's around 32 as soon as you bump into something. And of course, going uphill, you lose all speed, which is fair enough. Uh, but we're still making progress up the hill. The vehicle's profile is actually quite high in comparison to the Stug 3G, and this can be a problem uh, depending if you're behind a Say if you're behind the ridge and the top of your tank is showing um, and you've been spotted, likely you'll be hit compared to that if you were in a Stoke 3 g Anyway, we've made it on top of the hill now and we are struggling to find a bush because they keep removing them. <laughs> and I wait and my binoculars are up and we can see that the blue circle is my view range. Base is being captured, that's a sort of early sign of aggression by the enemy team. KV-1S, side profile. One shot in, nearly shot my teammate. He is 400 meters away, he can, there's no way he's going to see me. You can see the ray of fire is good, however, the accuracy somewhat lets it down, but the aim time of 1.6 is also quite good. So we only managed to do 114 damage to that enemy. I decide that the capture is going up too quickly and we need to do something about it. So I use the mobility to get into the capture circle. So if you want something done properly, you do it yourself in this game, essentially. And because me and the Wolverine have now entered the capture zone, the timer has ceased to go up for the enemy team as it's being contested. I spot the looks. I realise this audio may sound a bit peaky. And there's a T-34. We get shot at by a uh, SU-85. And therefore we pull back to avoid his fire. The capture has been reset down to 8 points, which is fine. So I decide to move away and go around using as much concealment as possible. Terrain, trees, rocks, houses, other enemy vehicles. Uh, sorry, vehicle wrecks and such. So we made it down here and we can see the 234. He's only just noticed us. Pump a shot in, 120 damage, just above. Another 120. Ray fire is excellent. And his armor is not good enough to bounce our shots. Another one with very well angled, but still, still weak. And we turn, and you can see if he didn't go down, we would have been able to face him and fire another shot. The traverse of 44 degrees is excellent. We see another target, Panzer 4 h put one shot in. Another 100. And another 100. Up to 700 damage done. And you can see the mobility of this vehicle is quite good. And completely ignore what I said about its top speed of 38 kilometers. This thing does reach it because it is based on a Panzer IV chassis. And that medium tank of tier 5 is actually quite good and mobile. Although its armor does suck. We are getting shot at by artillery, I believe. So we hide around here and wait to be spotted and then pull back. However, I believe we are still spotted. Because, wait for it. 
Oh, there comes some fire. Where that patch of... Uh... And there's another one. We've definitely been spotted. And we bump into a rock. <laughs> God damn trees covering it. Uh, okay, so we made it down into lower cover using more concealment. We're trying to be sneaky. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit because not a lot happens. We're looking out for enemy targets. The artillery may have been hiding in that corner, but he was not. Let's slow it down a bit. So going over hills and rough terrain, the vehicle is okay. It's not the fastest in the world, of course. It's not a light tank, but it's quite a mobile tank destroyer compared to the, the later higher tiers of the uh, German line. T-34 has been spotted, so we move in to assist. Pump is shot in. Goes down. Now, here is where I make my mistake. What I should have done is remain hidden and stealthed. But because I decide to keep rolling forward, the enemy knows where I am, essentially. And here is when things go... well, not quite here. He's still advancing towards the enemy spawn point. Oh look, and there's some artillery. That's a nice ammo rack. <laughs> and this is when the game goes downhill for me. You see the Black Prince, and initially I think he's AFK. He's not AFK, and we get hit by his gun, which is relatively ineffective, because we can see it just pinged off. Uh, here, I believe, or maybe here, the angled part, it's more likely it bounced off here. However, we get hit from the right, which I believe is in this bush. Um, I believe is in that bush here, uh, by the M4, and that is a high explosive shell. And the M4 has a 105mm gun, and it's more than effective to deal with me. Ah, there it is. We get hit on the side. They've changed the decals. These are high explosive and heat rounds. Um, yep, so we get hit in the side skirts, and because the side skirts are quite thin, even though it's a HE round, it's still 105mm in uh, size, and therefore it goes straight through our track, straight through the armour, and hits us for 200 damage. It doesn't penetrate because otherwise it would have killed us then and there. Anyway, I can't see this guy, and that is surprising. Even though my view range is not amazing. I thought I would have seen the M4 because he is firing a large caliber weapon. But we go down. And that is the end of my game. But it showed you how the Panzer 4, sorry, the Stoke 4 can be used. And here I am just going to speed it up. I think I'm just looking at my tank in disbelief now. And we watch our enemy uh, sorry, we watch our teammates trying to find the remaining enemies, which they do. They kill the T67. Base is still being captured, 81, 82. We've got this. There's only an M4 and an SU85. I say there's only an M4, he killed me, for goodness sake. But he was oh. Sorry if it just went black, tapped out. <laughs> of the replay. Uh, he was up here, but he's obviously relocated behind these uh, ridges to try and get more cover from our remaining allies. Just realised we can go and plug that. And that is the end of the game. We capped out. We let these two survive. And so there was a replay of the Stuck 4. I hope that the replay along with me talking about the characteristics of the vehicle helped you in some way, um, or is quite enjoyable. You can see that it excels at long range sniping. Uh, it relies on its stealth, it doesn't have any hit points, its armour is only effective from the front and from the low calibre, 
ammunition. <coughs> the mobility is quite good, the traverse is quite good, the rate of fire is quite good. All in all, the vehicle is a pretty average tier 5 tank destroyer. Uh, it's nothing completely remarkable about it. And because I don't play tier, tier 5 that often, I may struggle more with this vehicle compared to higher tiers, which I'm more used to these days. About a year ago, or a year and a half ago, say, I would have preferred playing lower tiers because that was the majority of vehicles I owned at the time. Anyhow, um, as for a reward, it's not a bad reward, but it isn't a, it isn't the best reward, of course. The best reward you can get in the current set of missions that you can complete is the Object 260, which is basically an IS-7, or very similar IS-7, uh, but that sits at tier 10, of course. And then the T-55A is also very good if you've played the T-54. Uh, I'm not really sure what to think of the T-28 concept. I haven't played it, but I have seen it, and it just seems very slow and ineffective. The gun on that thing may be quite good, though. But regardless, the Stoke 4 is pretty average in most respects. Its penetration can be... Um, Underwhelming depending on what you're fighting, but for its peers of medium tanks and tank destroyers, you should be okay. Only heavy, uh, only heavy tanks will give you an issue. And that was the Stug 4. I hope you enjoyed the review. I'll try to improve them in the future because this was the first proper one I tried to do. And I'll see you, chaps and chapettes, in the next one.